Being a criminal in the modern age really doesn't have quite the same thrill anymore. You get caught by the police, tried, and then sent to prison. The Vikings, on the other hand, well, they knew what to do with a criminal. Viking society didn't have political or criminal institutions in the same way as we do now, but they did have a complex web of honour and justice that ran throughout their entire society and laid the foundations of their legal system. Taking ownership of your misdeeds and having integrity were fundamental to being a good Viking. Vikings had a keen understanding of criminality and legality, and they had a set of laws that governed daily life in the Viking period. In fact, the modern English word law comes from the Old Norse lag, which means something laid down or fixed. Viking law wasn't written down until much later, so in oral tradition, there were lawmakers who were responsible for memorising all the laws instead. Although there were loose laws that would have been the same throughout all of Viking society, the punishments varied from settlement to settlement, and a crime that could have been overlooked in one place might earn you the death penalty in another. Execution was normally reserved for the most serious crimes like murder, kidnapping, magic with ill intent, and theft. Welcome to the Viking Vault. A crime by any other name. One of the most heinous crimes in the Viking period, after insulting someone, was theft. Life was hard in the Viking period. Harsh winters meant spending time in the village in close quarters. To steal from your neighbour was to be a dishonourable coward, and so the punishment was severe and could range from becoming a thrall to being outlawed, depending on what you'd stolen and who from. Murder was a big crime in the Viking period too, but weirdly enough, wasn't frowned upon as badly as theft was. So long as you admitted that you killed the other person. For example, if a Viking warrior came home and found another man in bed with his wife, he could kill that man and take the bloody sheets to the village elders and probably not get in any serious trouble. Probably only needing to pay a fine, otherwise known as were guilds, to the family and then all would be settled. Other crimes include magic with ill intent. Magic, called Seyur in the Old Norse, was accepted in the Viking period, although it was very much a woman's role to perform this sort of magic. It was dishonourable for a man to practice Seyu, even though Odin is recorded in the sagas doing magic. Insulting someone It might not be surprising to you now, but insulting someone in the Viking period was taken incredibly seriously. There's an instance in the Icelandic Landnamabuk where an early Icelandic Christian called Thorvald was travelling back home, and he was insulted by two men he met on the way. They said that, quote, the bishop, Frederick, had borne nine children, and Thorvald was the father of them all, indicating that Thorvald's wife had been cheating on him and made him raise another man's children. In response, Thorvald killed both of them immediately and carried on to Iceland. He wasn't killed for his actions, as he was acting to defend his honour, but he was banished from Iceland for the rest of his days. Niingr Vikings were a sensitive bunch, and were always very aware of their honour and social standing. This meant that any loss or attack on someone's honour was treated very seriously. One of the worst things that could happen to you would be to be deemed Niingr, or called Urgi. To be called Urgi was to be called a coward, or considered a person who broke Viking rules of society. If you called someone Urgi, Arger, or Rager, it was a grave insult, and the offended party would be within their rights to demand compensation, or even kill you. Other insults in Old Norse were Rager, Stradin, and Sordin. These were also incredibly serious insults to throw at someone, as they all indicated that you were a man who was passive in sexual activities, somehow not manly enough, and subservient. In a society that was incredibly hierarchical and combative, being a feminine man was probably one of the worst insults that could be thrown at you. On the other hand, if you were a woman accused of urgy, it was the other way round. You were too manly in your sexual desires, which also transgressed Viking norms and to be deemed Niingr was the worst of all. This was a term for someone who had broken the code of conduct in Viking society, and it was a social stigma that meant that you were a villain without any honour. If you were deemed Niingr, then you were no longer a part of society, and anybody could kill you without paying work guild or getting punished. Justice System, The Thing not the thing like the monster, but a court assembly called the Thing with the character Thorn instead of a TH. The Thing was an assembly of free men who would gather to discuss a crime, the law that had been broken, and ultimately decide what punishment the criminal was due. 
Only major crimes would be discussed at the thing as people would normally be able to settle issues between themselves by paying a fine or through a duel known as the Honganga. Without prison, punishment effectively came down to two options, paying a fine or getting outlawed. Getting outlawed in the Viking period was no small matter, and so normally the offending party would pay a fine that would be determined by how serious the crime was. Interestingly, the fines would vary according to the social standing of both the victim and the criminal. Paying a fine. One of the most common punishments for Vikings was just to pay a fine, otherwise known as a vergild. The amount of the fine would depend on the severity of the crime, the social standing of both parties, and the amount of money the individual had. The fine wouldn't just be paid to the injured party, portions of it would be paid to the local community and the village chief. But it was also partly your responsibility to make sure that you asked for the fine to be paid. If you didn't demand compensation, you might not be able to ask for it if required in future criminal cases. Single Combat, the Homganga. The Homganga was a legally recognized way to resolve disputes in the Viking period. As the Viking legal system relied heavily on honor and taking responsibility of your own actions, there were rules around who you could accuse and challenge to a duel. In theory, anyone could challenge another party to Homganga regardless of their social standing. The duel itself could be over an insult, an unpaid adept, or getting vengeance for a family member or friend who had been wrong. The home gang would be fought a few days after the offending party had been challenged, and if they didn't turn up to home gang, then it would be assumed that they were guilty as charged. If one of the parties didn't turn up to home gang, then they would be deemed to be without honor and could be termed Nyingir and possibly even outlawed. Not every Viking was a good warrior though, so it was possible for a friend or well-known warrior to fight in your stead if they believed that you were the one who had been wronged. Home gang rules changed over time, but in essence it remained the same. A wrong party would issue the challenge and state the time and place that the duel would happen. There were rules which determined what weapons could be used, what counted as a defeat, and what the winner would get. Normally, Homging would end on the death or mortal injury of one of the combatants, and death in Homging didn't count as murder. Ejil's saga gives us an example of Homging, saying that if a man was defeated, then he had to pay to ransom himself back out of debt. If, on the other hand, he died in combat, then everything he owned would go to the winner. Mutilation If you were a slave in the Viking period, you had no rights at all and your owner could treat and punish you however they wanted. Icelandic laws known as the Gragas or the Grey Goose laws did actually have some indication of what to do with a slave that tried to run away, saying that a thrall that tried to murder their master and escape would have their arms and legs cut off. Becoming a slave was also one of the potential punishments if you couldn't pay your debts or had committed a serious crime that wasn't bad enough to get outlawed, but still needed a severe punishment. Getting Outlawed Outlawry wasn't a glamorous adventure back in the Viking period. Viking society was close-knit and people relied on their family and friends for protection, help, and much more. Getting outlawed meant that you were considered outside the law, meaning that you had no rights, no property, and you could be killed without repercussions. It was effectively a death sentence and would have been devastating to Viking individuals. Being outlawed meant losing everything that defined you as a person, to lose family connections, and to be considered a monster and less than human. Full Outlaws Being a full outlaw meant that you had forfeited all rights to society for the rest of your life and usually meant a death sentence for the person who'd been outlawed. This was also called skugangur or going into the forest. Most people who'd been sentenced to full outlawry would flee to remote areas or even to another country to avoid being hunted down and killed by the person they'd wronged. Lesser Outlaws Lesser outlawry was still difficult, but meant that you were only banished from society for a number of years, usually only three. Although this seems like a more lenient punishment, it was still very hard to survive. You could return and claim your property if you survived the three years of banishment, but your life was still forfeit, although with some interesting rules as to when and where you could be killed. According to Viga Gloom Saga, Chapter 19, an outlaw was safe at three places in the country, or if you were within a bow shot of these places. You were also safe if you were on the road traveling to these three locations, so long as you moved more than a spear length off the road if you encountered other travelers. Famous Outlaws 
One of the most famous Viking outlaws is Grettir the Strong from Grettir's Saga, which tells the story of Grettir, a poet in Iceland who had been outlawed for 20 years. Grettir is not a likeable character, and even from a young age, it's clear that he isn't going to last long in Viking society, as he has a fierce temper and kills other people for very trivial reasons. He is outlawed for accidentally burning people to death, and becomes a tragic hero as he struggles to survive. He remains an important figure in his area and is respected as a hero, but lives his life alone and is often betrayed. Other famous outlaws from the saga include Eric the Red and Eagle Skellagrimson. Eric the Red was known as a man with a violent temper, which got him outlawed, although it wasn't the tragic story that Grettir experienced. Eric the Red is now known as the Viking who colonised Greenland after he was exiled for killing a man and his son. With nowhere else to go in Iceland, he decided to explore to the west as they knew that there was a large island in that direction. After about 900 miles of open ocean, Eric the Red landed in Greenland and spent his exile exploring the bleak land. Do the crime, do the time. While it seems that the Viking period was a lawless time, this goes to show that this wasn't the case. Vikings had strict laws and breaking the rules could mean forfeiting your life, your land, and even your limbs. On the other hand, if you were honest in your deeds, you could live a long and prosperous life under Viking law. Thank you for watching this episode of The Viking Vault. Please do subscribe if you're enjoying these videos, and I'll see you next week for another one. Have a great week. Cheers.